So let's finish up 5, 3. We've been looking at these independent events. So A and B are independent, right, if they have no effect on each other. Independent means no effect, no association, things like that. Um, but there's a special property. So when we have independent events, we're allowed to multiply for the AND case. Um, and again, I don't want you to get too like stuck on formulas because um, that's most mistakes in, with probability are just always trying to plug into formulas. So really, it's better to kind of pause and just think about what's going on. But basically, we're allowed to multiply for the AND case um, when, they're, when they're independent only when they're independent. And it can be extended. So if we have like three or four independent events, we can just keep multiplying. And this is allowed because they have no effect on each other. So we did um, this example before, right? We were allowed to multiply, but there was some sort of effect. But when they're independent, there's no effect, so we don't have to worry about the probability changing. So when we were looking at freshmen and sophomores, right, we took a student out of the room, and so it had an effect and changed the total. But with independent, that wouldn't happen. So an example is like flipping a coin. So if we're flipping six coins and they're all heads, we can just multiply all the probabilities. So flipping six coins is independent, right? Each coin has no effect on each other. Right. If you were to flip six coins right now, right, none of those coins are affecting the other one. So we're allowed to multiply. So essentially when we want something to happen after something, after something else, like these events followed by other events, we can multiply. And since the probabilities um, are independent, um, we can just go ahead and multiply. So it's just one half times one half, six times. So this is different than the freshman and sophomore because the total's not changing, right? It's one half every single time. So that's what that rule is telling me. And so you can just, what I would do two to the six because there's six of them. So it would be one over 64. Because just two times two times two times two times two times two. And then one over 64 is 0. 0.0156. So it's a pretty small percent chance, but that's because we need six things to happen. So let's look at one more example. Um, so we have studies have shown whether a basketball player makes the second of two free throws is independent of the first free throw. So this is saying that the probability for the first one is the same as the probability for a second one. It's not changing. Like again, when we were grabbing those freshmen and sophomores, the probability changed. Um, so this one is saying the player has a 70% chance of making a free throw, basically regardless which free throw it is. It's always 70%. That's what the independent's telling me. There's no change in that percent. Um, so the, pl the player's team is one point behind with no time remaining and they have two free throws. So what's the probability that they'll win the game based on these free throws? So winning the game would mean making both. And so that just, these are independent events. We need two things to happen. So anytime we're doing an event followed by an event, we multiply. So I'm not even using formulas. Anytime we're doing these followed by events, we multiply. The main idea is though, does the, prob the second probability stay the same or does it change? So since they're independent, the second probability stays the same. So the probability of making times the probability of making. Which would be 0.70 for 70%, right, in decimal form. We need to convert it to decimal form. Percent forms do not work here, so we'll always get rid of percent. And we'll just go ahead and multiply those. And so the, what independence is telling me is the independence is telling me this is the same. Same chance, same probability. So 0.70 times 0.70, I think is 0.49. So 49% chance that they win. All right, and what's the probability of losing? Same idea, it's an event followed by an event. So we'll do the probability of losing times the probability of losing. Oops, not losing, missing, right? Losing would be missing both. If they 
they if the player makes one and misses one, then it ties and that's part C. Losing just from the free throws would be missing both. So probability of missing times the probability of missing. Um, so if the probability of making is 70%, missing would be 30% or 0.30. Right, they either make it or miss it, so 30%. So we just do 0 0.30 times 0 0.30, which is 0 0.09. All right, and then the issue with a tie is there's two ways to tie or go into overtime, right? That would be a tie. They could miss and make, or they could make and miss. So this one has two orders. If you miss both, there's only one way to miss both, right? You miss both. But making and missing, you could miss and make, make and miss. So we'll um, do the probability of missing the first one times the probability of making the second one. So that'll be 0.30 times 0.70, right? An event followed by an event, we can multiply. For ors, we add. Um, and then what would this one be? This one would be making first, so that would be 0.70. And then missing second would be 0.30. And we'll just add them up. So you can do them individually or you could do them at the same time. Notice they're the same thing, right? It's just opposite order. So 0.42 when I add those up. So 42% chance. Another thing I noticed is these probabilities should add up to 1, 49, 09, and 42. Because these are kind of the only three things that could happen, right? They either win, lose, or tie. And yeah, they add up to one. Um, so just make sure if there's more than one way something can happen, um, then we need to add together the probabilities for all of the different ways. So when there's more than one way, you add all the different orders. And that's what we did here. So hopefully this is making sense. It just takes practice. Um, I just recommend try not to be overly formula friendly because um, sometimes we just see formulas and start plugging things in and it doesn't work. So try to think about what's going on before you start plugging into formulas.